Welcome to the Capital Compass. I'm Lindsay Melchek. Canadian-based Volatis Aerospace is a leading provider of integrated drone solutions across North America, with expanding operations in Latin America and globally. The company serves civil, public safety, and defense markets, and in May, the company announced a transformative merger with Drone Delivery Canada. Now, joining me with the details is Glenn Lynch, CEO of Volatis Aerospace. Welcome, Glenn. It's great to see you again, and it was so great to talk to you at IIF as well. Hi, Lindsay. Good to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Now, let's start with just a bit of a background, if we could. Can you walk us through Volatis' journey and really how it's grown into a key player in the drone tech and services space? Certainly. So the company was founded uh, about six years ago with the belief that drones would replace piloted aircraft for specifically logistics and and, uh, aerial survey intelligence type works. And then eventually it would actually start to replace human beings in jobs that were dull, dirty, or dangerous, which is really the theme of uh, autonomous or automated systems. So now the company has become an innovator in aerial intelligence and logistics. We grew fairly quickly, 50% from uh, organic growth and 50% through acquisition. So we are an acquisitive company. And and, uh, last August, with the completion of Drone Delivery Canada, that was our 18th acquisition. So now we have a service that uh, basically delivers uh, intelligence and cargo services globally. We've got a strong presence in public safety, infrastructure, oil and gas, and energy. We've pioneered uh, off-grid nested drone solutions, so basically autonomous drone in a box that are dropped off at mining and industrial sites and operated remotely, and really become known for our regulatory strengths that have allowed us to operate beyond the confines of typical regulations through waivers and special flight operating certificates. Now, what are some of those standout technologies or platforms of Volatis has built? Let's expand on that a little bit. I mean, how do these set you apart from others in the drone industry? Well, funny enough, well, R&D is part of our DNA and we have a portfolio of, of technologies. What really sets us apart from many is that we're truly a technology agnostic company. We've developed more of an integrated ecosystem of aerial solutions that include much of our own technologies, but also other people's technologies. Um, The concept is to leverage our remote operations capabilities from our OCC in the Toronto area for remote, uh, the remote operation of air vehicles beyond visual line of sight of the, uh, of the pilot. So a lot of the IP was uh, for remote operations came from drone delivery Canada um, including our ground-based infrastructure, many of the car delivery drones. And today, we conduct nearly daily flights where the air vehicle is more than 3,000 kilometers away from the uh, pilot operator in Toronto. On the inspection sides, we've got AI-driven inspections. We do thermal, th- uh, uh, thermal leak detection, remote sensing activities. Um, and then I, I should mention also our Volatis Academy, which I'm quite proud of. That's our our, uh, training and and, um, uh, education platform where we focus on platform agnostic training and STEM programs, specifically our uh, SEER program, which is our scientific experiential aerial research program that works with high school students to have them understand drone technology, sensors, and use data that they collect to to populate uh, algorithms that ultimately can, um, can contribute to things like the early detection of Dutch elm disease. Uh, projects like that. And then, of course, the last thing is focusing on our uh, regulatory approvals that allow us to use all of this this ecosystem or engage it in operations that are beyond what most companies can. I mean, that right there sets you apart. My goodness. Let's just walk over to the financials if we could. Can you break down some of those highlights for us? You know, revenue growth, profitability, any big investments or partnerships that have helped drive that performance for you? So the the company has experienced some decent growth. We're still a small business by definition, but our uh, revenues in 2021 were 660, basically 660,000. And 2024, a few years later, we're 27 million and we're targeting 50 million in 2025. Um, We've pivoted a lot towards recurring revenue models where we're dealing with long-term contracts with oil and gas and power utilities versus the early days of individual one-off type contracts. Not to say that we don't still have a fair number of individual buildings or or projects that we will inspect, 
but a lot of uh, a lot of our focus now is on larger scale, bigger customers, bigger contracts, basically. On the equipment sales side, we have about twelve million dollars dollars in unfulfilled demand in Canada alone for solution sales. So big opportunities there. Our defense strategy focuses on ISR or intelligence uh, reconnaissance and surveillance type services with a focus in Canada, Europe, and Southeast Asia. A lot of focus around uh, NATO allies. Um, Our revenue mix is about 60% on the service side, which is basically our, our turnkey services, our training and our consulting services, and 40% on solution sales. That's expected to shift more and more towards the service side of the business as we continue to grow. Um, margins have also grown. So from about 24% to about 35%, we're targeting uh, 40 to 45% in the uh, in the near future. That's a year-over-year growth that will continue to improve as our business mix uh, changes and as our as our business evolves. And one key thing, I'm quite proud of our of our post merger uh, strategies, our, our synergies that we were able to realize with Drone Delivery Canada. We forecast $3 million in savings in the first 100 days. We actually achieved $3.8 million and near break even in Q4 last year. So our, our adjusted EBITDA was uh, just a little better than $200,000 loss, which is putting us uh, kind of on track for our target to a, uh, a positive EBITDA on a go forward basis by the end of the year. Let's unpack that merger just a little bit more with Drone Delivery Canada. Now that that's complete, I mean, how does that boost Volatis' capabilities and position in the market? So it brought a lot to us. Uh, It was very much a technology company that had focused on remote operations and logistics services. So it's definitely strengthened our cargo logistics technologies and, and IP, but it's also given us a lot of enhanced capabilities through the Operational Control Center and the staff that came with that, giving us national and international operating capabilities that I would say are second to none right now. It added long-term regulatory approvals and positioned us as a dual leader in both logistics and remote operations for intelligence type products. So it wasn't just that, that was the big news. I mean, the company also announced a major national expansion of its drone services in May 27 of this year. Um, What does that role actually look like on the ground and how does it fit into your bigger picture goals? So that's really about uh, nationwide beyond visual line of sight. In other words, where the air vehicle is at a long distance away from the operator. It makes us uh, it makes us very scalable. It enables coast to coast, coast to coast remote operations of drones Um, but with an internal self-approval mechanism. So as long as we fall within the confines of our approval, the conditions of the approval, it allows us to self-approve a large percentage of the operations that we would be working towards. So it advances our national drones, uh, drones as a service model, our uh, nested drone solutions, basically drone in a box, industrial drone in a box that are just deployed. And it gives us immediate scalable benefits and and increased gross margins in intelligence, the remote sensing area, and in the logistics business. And it's a significant support uh, of many of the uh, federal government's goals that were announced yesterday during their their news conference. Fascinating, really. I mean, you have so much going on and even more so the big news that just dropped. So... You know, with Canada's fast-tracking military spending and prioritizing domestic vendors, is Volatis quietly positioning itself for an elephant-sized defense contract? And if so, I mean, why aren't these prospectives, the prospective wins that you're speaking of, aren't they? why are they not reflected in your baseline forecast? So largely because they're elephants. You know, they, the simple truth of the matter is, um, you know, many of these are very large-scale opportunities and if you forecast them in your model, they're big misses. If you don't forecast them, they're big wins, right? And and frankly, these are new opportunities. If you think about it, uh, back in November, we knew that things were changing geo- from a geopolitical standpoint. And and in fact, the Lattice engaged a full-time lobby firm, David Pratt and Associates in uh, Ottawa to support us. Um, but right after that, in January, uh, our prime minister, our previous prime minister stepped down pro-government which basically put everything on hold until May 27th when government effectively started to operate again. And of course, June 9th was a big day for the announcement of some of the policies that we've been expecting. So that's part of why they're, they're you know, with, a, with an election and a new government, you really never know 
how much momentum is going to go in which direction. But we followed that pretty closely. And the big deal now is the federal mandate or the, the uh, government's stated goals aligns with um, the defense and economic and security objectives that Vladis is well positioned to fulfill. So we provide cost-effective uh, ISR and logistics for border, um, for Arctic. We can, we can work on everything from security to public safety to sovereignty issues. Um, major opportunity for growth in defense contracts and domestic innovation, especially as the government attempts to repatriate that 75 cents of every dollar that we spend in the defense industry south of the border. Um, their goal is to become an energy superpower and create that creates inspection and monitoring opportunities for Volatis. And of course, in the resource sectors, things like mining, like the um, the Ring of Fire in Ontario and rare earths in British Columbia and, and uh uh, Quebec, those are all opportunities in every phase of the development from the exploration to the development and management of the mine to the transportation infrastructure, roads and railways that are are going to carry it, all opportunities for Volatis. And that ties in also with the major uh, acceleration in infrastructure programs and investment, um, which align with our capabilities in mapping and, and uh, inspection services. So I think there's a significant opportunity Let's say there's a. It's more like a herd of elephants right now. I, I think we've got some good opportunities, not just for Pilatus, but for the entire Canadian uh, aerospace and RPAS industry. Well, let's look ahead here, then, Glenn. What's next in terms of growth and innovation for Pilatus, and how do you plan to stay ahead in a space that's really moving as fast as drone tech? So we'll continue to scale our drones as a service, particularly with the remote uh, drone in a box or drone infrastructure type capabilities. Um, exp- we want to expand our U.S. and international regulatory uh, envelope so that we can achieve the same level of operations we can in Canada. Um, we'll be pursuing uh, waivers to support larger drone operations as the way as the regulations evolve. We've got a, a change in regulations in November. The Lattice has already positioned itself to, uh, to adapt and capitalize on those uh, opportunities. But we've already started looking at saying, okay, now with the baseline or with the bar having uh, been raised, now we look to go one step beyond that into larger and more capable drones. Um, We have a a real eye on industrial and logistics use cases with some of our partner technologies that are being enabled by these new regulations that are coming. And ultimately, um, if you look at the the objectives of the government in terms of uh, targeting economic leadership on a global scale, and achieving more security independence. Those are all areas that Pilatus will be very tightly focused on in the days, months, and and, uh, uh, years ahead. Well, Glenn, I really appreciate you taking the time and giving us really a peek behind the curtain at what Pilatus is really building. And please definitely come back because I know I'm intrigued. So uh, thank you again. Lindsay, thank you very much. Again, that was Glenn Lynch, CEO of Volatis Aerospace, trading on the venture under the ticker symbol FLT and on the OTCQB under the ticker symbol TAKOF. Check them out at volatisaerospace.com. I'm Lindsay Melchuk with Stockhouse Publishing. We'll see you next time.